The latest Republican presidential primary debate focused on national security just wrapped up in Washington, D.C. tonight. The uh, Newt Gingrich went into the debate, leading the pack with 24 percent. Mitt Romney has 20 percent. Herman Cain went into the debate with 17 percent. Rick Perry, 11 percent in a CNN poll. Everyone else is in single digits. There is even more good news inside that poll for Newt Gingrich. When asked who is most likely to understand complex issues, 43 percent. Very overwhelming number for Gingrich said Gingrich is more likely to understand complex issues. The next one down, 18 percent said Romney. Twelve percent of misguided Republican voters thought Kane has the ability to understand the complex issues the best. And 11 percent said Ron Paul. Paul. And when asked who is most qualified to be commander in chief, 36 percent said Gingrich. Again, a commanding lead for Gingrich on that question. Only 20 percent said Romney, 12 percent said Perry, and a lost 10 percent said Herman Cain. In the politically most loaded exchange of the evening, Newt Gingrich and Mitt Romney sparred over the problem of illegal immigration. I'd staple a green card to the diploma of anybody who's got a, a, a degree of, uh, of math, science, high, a master's degree, Ph.D. We want those brains in our country. But in order to bring people in legally, we've got to stop illegal immigration. That means turning off the magnets of amnesty, in-state tuition for illegal aliens, uh, uh, employers that knowingly hire people that have come here illegally. We welcome legal immigration. This is a party. This is a party that loves legal immigration. I don't see how the, part, the party that says it's the party of the family is going to adopt an immigration policy which destroys families that have been here a quarter century. And I'm prepared to take the heat for saying, let's be humane in enforcing the law without giving them citizenship, but by finding a way to create legality so that they are not separated from their family. Governor. Joining me now are Howard Feynman, editorial director for the AOL Huffington Post Media Group and MSNBC analyst, and Ron Carey, the former chief of staff to Congresswoman Michelle Bachman and the former chairman of the Minnesota Republican Party. Uh, Ron Carey, first of all, did you see anything in this debate tonight that would change the lineup as we now see it in the CNN poll? I don't believe so. There really, there's two races going on right now. There's Mitt Romney, who has a stable 20 to 25 percent support. And Mitt Romney did a fantastic job tonight. I mean, it's a broken record. Every debate, he does incredibly well. He looks presidential. He says the exact right things for the Republican conservative electorate. Uh, the problem is there's still about three out of four Republicans don't trust Mitt Romney. And that's probably not going to change. But the other battle is to who is going to be the non-Romney candidate that's going to emerge and really get down to a two-person race between Romney and somebody else. And Newt Gingrich did a, a, a fine job tonight. Uh, it was interesting to see Michelle Bachman did, uh, is the one person who did take a swipe at him on the immigration issue and challenged him, uh, really going down the same path that uh, torpedoed uh, Rick Perry's campaign a few months ago. And, and, you know, so for the first time, Newt took a body blow. And it'll be interesting to see if that makes any movement in the polls. But overall, you know, Newt still had a very grasp of the issues. And uh, I think most people, he's going to probably stay solid in the polls at this point in time. Ron, let me stay with you on this immigration question, because it seems to me that uh, Newt Gingrich found a new way of talking about it. Uh, uh, Perry's way of talking about it was obviously disastrous within uh, Republican Party politics. But you heard some new sounds and some new angles from Gingrich on this. Has he found a way to make uh, the, this more open notion about what might be possible in immigration policy uh, acceptable to the Republican primary audience? Well, it certainly he brought he, he packaged uh, his position in a much more palatable mode. Whether or not there's still a lot of Republicans who believe that we need to enforce the law, and if you're here illegally, you're here illegally, and that's the bottom line. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if those people who maybe have that belief and have been going towards Gingrich are now going to start looking for other choices. I mean, Gingrich does. Uh, it's interesting to see his rise because he has taken some very controversial positions on mandated health care on. Uh, 
uh, global warming and on uh, immigration in the past that are really outside of conservative orthodoxy. Uh, but uh, the Republican electorate at this point in time is gravitating to him. The uh, question is, is it going to be a short-term date or is it going to be a long-term romance? And so far we've had a lot of uh, short dates, but nobody's been able to uh, really have that sustaining power among the non-Romney candidates. And, and we're getting down to, uh, short, to the fourth quarter here. Will anybody else have a time to, to rise up? And can Gingrich basically, because he's doing well at this late stage in the game, be the, uh, uh, the winner by default, if nothing else, to go against Romney because we're so close to the beginning of the Iowa caucuses? Howard Feynman, how do you score the debate tonight? Well, let's take Newt first. Uh, this was his first appearance as the new front runner in the race. And you saw a different Newt. You saw an avuncular, thoughtful Newt who even complimented the moderator, Blitz Blitzer. <laughs> Uh, Newt said, yeah. excellent question, Wolf. So it, Newt had, had clawed his way to the top by spending the previous 11 debates attacking the media and the moderators. Uh, tonight he was the nice purring like a kitten Newt Gingrich in his new front runner status. But I, I, I think a measure of his confidence now was his willingness to take on the immigration issue, as Ron was saying. That's what killed Rick Perry. Newt is a super confident guy who thinks he can explain it better. I think he backed away a little bit uh, in the middle of the debate after he first got in it, saying, well, these people have to be here 25 years, etc. But he did use the H word, humane. He said, I'm willing to be humane. That's a measure of his confidence. Uh, Mitt Romney uh, hewed to the conservative line on most points, uh, but always in a mechanical way that never convinces the conservatives uh, but manages to keep him at 20 to 25 percent. Uh, Rick Perry, interestingly, had a chance to, 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 say, uh, to say to Newt Gingrich, hey, you and I agree on immigration. But Rick Perry so flummoxed at this point that he didn't do it. He stayed away from that and instead stressed making all these ultra-conservative points on foreign policy, which I think were designed to impress the questioners such as David Addington and Paul Wolfowitz. I, I, I half expected Dick Cheney to ask the last question tonight yeah. and talk about war policy. And I think uh, the exchange between John Huntsman and Mitt Romney on Afghanistan Afghanistan, on the limits of what we do in Afghanistan, was very interesting. I thought that was the most involved in the debate that John Huntsman has been. And, you know, Ron, Ron Paul is Ron Paul. He makes a lot of sense on a lot of things, but then usually says something a little squirrely toward the end. And he did that again tonight. Ron Carey, tell me something about the people who are in your Republican debate audience and who are voting for Ron Paul. When he says the war on drugs is a failure and comes as close as you can get to just saying, you know what, legalize the stuff. He's got no problem with medical marijuana. He's got no problem with uh, with just stopping the drug war. And he gets big applause in your Republican uh, debate halls when he says that. Who are those Republicans who are clapping for that? Well, Ron Paul attracts a crowd who maybe have been non-political. Uh, it's largely a under-30 male crowd that follows Ron Paul. And they're good people, uh, but there is a very finite number of them in the Republican circles. You know, Ron Paul is going to be at 8 to 12 percent in the primary, and that's the, and it's, he's not going to fall below 8, but he's not going to go above 12 unless there's unique circumstances. They're very dedicated people. They will show up to vote, and uh, they do, do go quite far in the political process simply because the world, as they say, belongs to those who show up, and they show up in the process. So uh, they have influence above their uh, numbers. But again, it's a very finite group, and he's somebody who is going to just basically going to park roughly 10 percent of the conservative libertarian vote under Ron Paul and take them off the board. But he's not hey, going to be a factor at the end. It occurred to, it occurs Howard, to me ahead. that it occurs to me that Paul, uh, Ron Paul is the last hippie in America. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, uh, if, he, he's the anti-war. Let's legalize pot candidate. It's really amazing to see him pop up in the midst of the Republican uh, nominating process. You know, really Lawrence, is, if I can Howard, uh, Mitt, Ro Mitt Romney delivered his standard camp, uh, debate performance tonight. Right. But is that still good enough? He's now in second place, and it is not no. just a, a close second place. He's now in what is a distant second place yeah. uh, to Newt Gingrich, and Newt Gingrich is polling as the candidate who would be the best commander-in-chief. He's polling as the one right. who understands the complex issues the best. Doesn't Mitt Romney have to find some new moves now against yes, Gingrich? Yes, he, he absolutely does. And, see, now everybody's waiting for 
Newt to blow up. You know, Newt's capable of losing his temper. He's capable of overplaying his hand. There's always internecine battles in Newt's entourage, as we saw when his staff quit back in June. Uh, but if it's all about debates, he's got the gravitas to win these debates. Also, the notion that it's got to be a governor who handled a local economy doesn't seem to be holding water, at least in this election cycle. And Newt Gingrich can go back to the days of the 90s, when, which ironically, Bill Clinton's out there inferentially touting. So, you know, Newt's got a lot of strength here. And, and I think that, that uh, Mitt Romney needs a new rationale of some kind, or and he needs a new strategy. Because what's going to happen is his people, he's got very experienced people in his campaign, they're going to look for dirt on Newt. They're going to go after Newt with all kinds of oppo research and all kinds of stuff. But Newt is kind of pre-disaster, to use the phrase from uh, the John Irving book. First of all, because all the other candidates who've come before him are deeply flawed, whether it's Michelle Bachman or, or Herman Cain or Rick Perry. So Newt's flaws look moderate in many respects by comparison. Also, Newt has been gone over so many times. Nothing about Newt is new except maybe recently the stuff about Fannie Mae, which he should have been asked about tonight, by the way, and wasn't. And all the money he got from health care, the health care industry, which he wasn't. The rest of the candidates are going to have to attack Newt. I didn't see any of that tonight. They're really going to have to go after him if they're going to try to stop him. And that means talking about his lobbying ties and about Fannie and Freddie, maybe even stuff about his personal life that, you know, the oppo guys will try to slip to reporters. It's going to get really nasty very fast. And I think Mitt Romney's going to have to confront him and say, Newt, you know, you're the old story. You're the story of the old Washington. I'm from outside Washington. The problem is that Mitt Romney doesn't read as an outsider. When you watch Mitt Romney, he seems like an ult the ultimate insider, at least in terms of the establishment, if not Washington. So yeah, Lawrence, it seems like he actually yeah. won a Senate campaign a long time ago and has yes, been in exactly. Washington ever since. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Howard Feynman, editorial well, director for the AOL Huffington Post and Media Group and MSNBC analyst, and Ron Carey, former chief of staff to Congressman Michelle Bachman. Thank you both very much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you.